What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Miles Ben Solo, and here on the Force Unbox, we unbox and review Star Wars collectibles from all across the galaxy. And today, we're going to be talking about the longest Nerf gun ever created, the limited edition Mandalorian Nerf Blaster from Hasbro. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this item, but I'm super happy to finally have my hands on this so we can find out the truth. For those of you who are new here, welcome to the Force Unbox. The Nerf Mandalorian Amban Phase Pulse Blaster was announced and pre-orders opened at two retailers, Amazon and Hasbro Shop, all the way back in December of 2020 and sold out in days. The original expected ship date of the item was March 2021, but after quite a few delays, the release was pushed back to October 2021, which means the first people who pre-ordered waited almost a year for it to arrive. I don't know about you guys, but I would have high expectations for an item that I had to wait almost a year to receive. I haven't owned a Nerf gun since I was a kid, but I'm super excited to review this, not only because it's a giant Star Wars themed Nerf rifle, but also because it's something different from the helmets and lightsabers we usually review on the channel. The packaging on this is insane, and was a huge reason that I wanted to pick it up. Not to mention this thing is gigantic, coming in at over 5 feet long. The packaging is loaded with Mandalorian symbols, Orabas script, and a nice picture of the man himself, the star of Book of Boba Fett Episode 5. Shout out to you, Dallas Howard. Great episode. The Amban rifle is a relatively brand new weapon in the Star Wars universe, only ever seen wielded by the Mandalorian himself. The Nerf Blaster doesn't accurately represent how it appears in the show, obviously. I don't really care for the white and orange, but I do really like the wood coloring and texture on the stock and I feel like it provided much needed character. The rifle also has some metallic gold accents and a weathered dark gray gearbox. Overall, the rifle is four pounds and extremely lightweight. It's usually a good thing when an item is light and easy to carry, but for an item that's solely made of plastic and over four feet long, you have to question its durability. Just like in The Mandalorian, the rifle only holds one bullet at a time, so you must reload after every shot, which isn't very practical for a Nerf war. Also, the rifle comes with 10 official Nerf bullets that are silver, which is meant to emulate Beskar bullets, which was a really nice touch. The scope of the rifle, for lack of better words, sucks. You can't see anything out of it, and the scope is locked in a fixed position despite the manual illustrating the scope can be adjusted. The rifle also has some sound and light effects as well. It makes a firing effect when you pull the trigger, regardless of if it's loaded or not. It also has a sound effect when you close the lid to the chamber. And the scope illuminates red as well, which I didn't think would be possible, but it makes it even harder to see out of. All these effects are powered by two AAA batteries that are conveniently located on the underbarrel of the rifle. This rifle is extremely easy to use. To load it, all you have to do is open the chamber lid and put the dart in the hole. Close it, cock it back with the white piece under the barrel, and once fired, you uncock the barrel and then the chamber lid opens automatically. They included a small loop on the back left side of the rifle that can hold one extra bullet. Now let's talk about the performance of this blaster. I've never rated a Nerf gun and I don't necessarily know how to compare it to other similar Nerf rifles if there are any, but we're gonna go load this thing up and we're gonna go shoot some targets and we're gonna see the max distance this thing can shoot. I took this thing out to shoot and I was surprised, but not in a good way. To start off with, the rifle doesn't have very good range. I would say the range is about 10 feet, which I feel like is pretty underwhelming. When shooting, the bullet comes out of the rifle inconsistently, sometimes going straight and hitting the target, and other times the bullet hits the barrel on the way out and becomes a dud. Since the scope is flawed and virtually useless, you must rely on the prongs at the end of the rifle for aiming. I ended up getting a tiny Nerf pistol to compare this, and it probably could shoot three times as far. To conclude, this rifle is not meant for battle and should only be purchased as a collectible. The last thing I want to touch on before we get into my final thoughts is the price of the item. The rifle costs $130 retail. On Amazon, it's actually on sale right now for $120. Currently, the rifle on Hasbro Shop is full retail and is on back order until March 1st. My final thoughts on this item are that the rifle is about what I expected in terms of looks and playability. But after holding it in my hands and feeling how frail it is and the issue with the scope, it's not worth $130 in my opinion. The only thing that's saving this from me calling this extremely overvalued is the outstanding job they did with the packaging, if you can manage to get one in collectible condition. 
which unfortunately seems like a quarter chance based on other reviews that I came across on Amazon. Although it has flaws, I do think it's still worth the pickup as long as you get it for less than $100. And the packaging is in near perfect, if not mint condition. Thank you guys for checking out this video. At the time of this recording, we are six subscribers away from hitting 100. If you like the review like the one you just saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm super happy with the growth I've had over the last few months and I couldn't have done it without you guys. I'm planning on doing a little giveaway of some kind when I reach 100 subscribers just to say thank you. Make sure you follow me on my Instagram at MilesBensolo to stay up to date on the giveaway details and all things Star Wars collectibles. Before you head out, let me know what your favorite non-lightsaber Star Wars weapon is. Thank you guys again. I'll see you on the next one.